Welcome, YouTube! Hi, guys. Uh, today, we're doing, uh, as you probably know already, more Beacon Pines. Day 3, Part 3, Beacon Pines. I'm ready. Let's just get into it, baby. Here we go. I'm excited. I like this game. I'm, I'm having fun. It's been such a fun game to play. Oh my god, I just realized that it's like our three friends on the front of the screen. Hi, your two. It's gonna be a good, good day, I think. We're gonna maybe finish. I'm excited. We might. We might. I have At a feeling that, moment, that it could take one more after this. Possibly cold air ripped through the crowd instantly for a man like honesty. The okay, so that There's was what that we did last time. No, we got a please. So yeah, last time, if you guys don't remember, uh, we went to the Harvest Festival. We died because we did the hard one over here, and then we unlocked Sly along the way, and we accidentally let everything go to freeze so this time i have a feeling that we might beat this by being sly uh but if we do then we have other places to go with it uh we have two other places to go and uh yeah if we if we somehow still uh fail then you know we just have we have we have more to look through but i feel i feel like sly might be the one that the takes classic. us over the edge good cop sly cop i think it might take us to chapter 11 Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. What? What's going on here? You're, you're that Modeville girl. Um. Uh, okay, there we go. Please call me Beck. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. G Junior Bear sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. When did she become British? Oh, last stream. I was like, the you were here for that, I think. I did it for so long. <laughs> She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Gran. This was going to be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions? Operation Spark Plug, Spark Plug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you need some backup. But she sent a child? What better way to avoid prying eyes? Who would, who would suspect a kid? I suppose that makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. Beck, you smart motherfucker. That had to be uncomfortable. A li uh, fuck. A little, a l <laughs> well, how do I do the lisp? How, how do I do the lisp? A little, yeah. But you understand. We never know how to tr who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're both here to. Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroyed the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. She sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anywhere to find out that we're going to destroy the source, well, we both know how bad that might be. Your accent has improved. This kid's brilliant. Dude, I love Beck. Beck is so smart. Um, thank you. I'm glad my accent has improved. This game has been all voice acting. I've been trying to do different voices for everyone. So I feel like it's it's really helped my range a little bit. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. You're sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good, just, there's one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Ah, uh, it's nothing, really. The other day, I had the radio on scan while stock restocking the candy shelf. And wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I, I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and know where to put it. It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work on that. I've got this under control. 
That's a relief. Uh, 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 Between you and me, this basement gives me the wheelies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. She, dude, I told you, I told you, out of the three of them, she would be the one to do it. Oh, let's go. Let's go. It makes sense, right? Because our boy Luca is a little bit, a little bit trustworthy, too, too nice, too trustworthy. And Rolo is trying too hard to be like a badass. But Beck, the new kid, is like, she, she got that dog in her, you know? <laughs> she can, she can really lie to people and manipulate them. And she's going to grow up to be a great person, I'm sure. <laughs> You guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time, Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf, but all he ever sells us is apples. Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. Yeah, yeah. The password, Rolo. Well, sure, but one thing's, once things back are... Rolo, you you dumb bitch! <laughs> Learn to speak! Well, sure, but... Si <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> but once things are back to normal, <laughs> I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine. In the meantime, I've got, a, got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. It's not my fault. It's not my fault Rolo doesn't know how to talk. See? Lily gets it. <sighs> he said he had a password, heard a password on the radio. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. He needs English lessons? Let Fucking hell! <laughs> Lushing <laughs> I'm starting to do- it's because I'm like still stuck in the Tolliver lisp mode, you know? I gotta go back to my normal speaking where I'm like- It's hard doing- Listen, how about you try to stream- Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you guys! <laughs> Don't make fun of me! We just need to find the hidden meaning. Hmm, okay. Uh, what's another word for underground? Uh, buried? Uh, covered? Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those each letter is a number thingies. Uh, so you would be 21. 21, 21. N would be 14. D would be... Oh, it's an anagram. Nun Creed's Drugstore. Let's go! We can go into the drugstore! Let's go! I've been waiting. Beck looked at Rolo with amazement. Dude, he, he fucking... He killed that shit. That was crazy. Rolo, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Kren's nude rug store. <laughs> yeah, I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. Like, uh, I know this one guy named Bill. How do you feel about him, Rolo? I feel like this would this game would be like a crossover with Gravity, Gra blah, 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 Gravity Falls, surely. Like, I feel like, you know, it's they're like neighboring towns, you know? Well, I guess I know what we need to go next. Investigate, uh, Kren's nude rug store or whatever. Here we go. Yeah, right? It's very Gravity Falls. I'm a fan. What's up? Oh my god! Mommy! <laughs> you scared me half to death! Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? No. He's got me waiting around for like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. I realized that maybe she should be like a southern belle. It just makes sense. Uh, and then I, I hadn't done it before and I should have done it. Anyway. <laughs> it's very quiet. Ooh. Yo, the lighting on this perennial harvest sign is kind of pretty though. I know that they're like... I, I know the green probably represents like toxicity because they're like hazardous. But it's a pretty green. Oh shit. You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. Was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what'd you have to report? What is this Insepid Town Festival really about? Fake life, fake nature green. That's fair. That's fair. It's probably both. I think... Gus looked around nervously. I think Mr. Kerr really does just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what Kerr and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. 
was excuse me this was our father's town he's gone eris and he isn't coming back father left us with nothing but problems mr kerr came here and offered to help us we accepted that help we didn't agree to to them to turning father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground that is just a temporary arrangement the glow can be seen from our damn backyard they're dumping their nasty little secrets on us when this all inevitably goes wrong who do you think will be blamed Eris's cry hung in the air we have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus, but you will always just be a Gus. What the fuck does that mean? Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. It's getting late, children. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, he's not a nice guy. Kerr is. But also, she's bad too, because she was on the side with Grandma. But then they wanted to destroy the source. Maybe they thought it'd go better for them than freezing the entire fucking town. Maybe the world. Maybe the universe. Who knows how much they froze? Bars! Um. Yeah, weird. Okay, let's keep moving. Actually, I just want to know if there's any secrets down here, real quick. Just. Just wondering. All right, nothing. <laughs> Crow, you missed so much yesterday. Also, you didn't even miss much because at the end of stream, everything got frozen. I don't know if you were there, actually. I'm pretty sure you were there. Everything got frozen over the first time. And Grandma left a note telling us that was going to happen. So obviously, it was Grandma who did it. But I don't know. She's, like, trying to be a good guy. Maybe she has, like, a, a good, you know... Alright, well, I mean, at least you prepared, because it got you a one. <laughs> so, you know, W. Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. I kind of want some. I want candy. <laughs> hey, hey, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncrete. Is he still in there? <laughs> I'm afraid not. <laughs> Then where'd you get the candy from? <laughs> you might say we have an arrangement. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. <laughs> Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life. <laughs> Though we might not always have family to rely on, licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice would be my first choice. But whatever floats your boat. <laughs> you can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I like sour gobs. I'm certain you do. I always wondered why Mr. Nuncreed kept licorice in stock. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold, hard cash. <laughs> I feel like he would laugh like that in the end, you know? Be a little fucking loser. Well, he's right. It's locked. It's locked. There's got to be more clues. Okay, let's see. I'm going to test the handle again, just in case. All right. Anything down here? Okay, 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 okay. All right, I got it. Chill the fuck out, bruv. I understand. Damn, bruv. Jesus. What about the telephone booth, maybe? Okay, chill out. It's just checking. Yeah, that's the only thing that's on, so... Have you ever seen anything actually- anyone actually use this thing? You sound like Rick and Morty for Luca. <laughs> yeah, Luca's voice has changed a lot, and I just turned him into like a little dork. Uh, your le voice acting has come leagues from Annie's botched Australian accent and turned a boy- Yeah, but I really like- I, I just had fun doing Annie's because it was just- Oh, you turn a boy! How you doing, bruv? <laughs> So it's not botched, it's amazing, actually. Besides Mr. Nuncreed, no. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. That is not a normal phone booth. He's, it's got like a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Kren's nude rug store. I mean, underground secrets. 
The password. Beck flung open the door, and they all squeezed in. Hey, oh, what's good, Risco? How you doing? Hi, Bungo. Hey, what's good, Bungo? How does it How does it feel to be here? <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. All right, let's see here. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. <laughs> Underground secrets. Sounds like that did something. Great. Now what? I guess we. Ah! The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Imagine they fucking died again. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. Knew it. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. I love the vine boom. It's so dumb, but I love it. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. Oh my god, we have a laundromat down here. What the hell? Oh, I knew it. You knew there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth? Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No? 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 Sorry, I forgot what accent that bitch had. I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the transdimensional conduits from Hank Atomic issue number 12 were real? Rolo, at one point or another, you said that just about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I messed up that sentence completely and I was gonna decide if I should acknowledge it or just move along and I decided to not move along. It is a very cute art style. I really like it. That's why I'm so- that's why I'm such a good predictor. It looks like there's- like each of these has something written on them. Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have mines here? Not that I know of. This town is all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Paul always says you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies in this exact situation. That's the thing about Pa, you don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Okay, so he's a fucking insane person. The children yearn for the mines! <laughs> Perennial Harvest Main Office. Uh, this is where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff? Is she involved in all of this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Last one. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Have you played Superliminal yet? I have not. That's one of those like weird like metal ones that people have told me to play a couple times and I just haven't. So like that one, um, there's that picture one that people were freaking out about that I don't know if it actually flopped or it succeeded because I didn't see a bunch about it. There's also um, Stanley Parable, but that has like an achievement that takes 10 fucking years. So I don't know how I feel about playing that one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll give some of these a go. This this month, though, I'm playing, like, sad and scary games. So I need sad and scary games. Have you listened to those Carpa songs yet? I haven't. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> every time someone suggests stuff, I just kind of leave it. And I'm like, I'll look at this later. And then I just don't. Don't say fuck you. I have other things going on. Fuck you. <laughs> Get fucked. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? I looked through all your fucking reels that you sent me. Fuck off. <laughs> Logan Roy, fuck off. Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Um, this suit has a broken mask. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking get you. <laughs> fuck off. You can't say that on Twitch. That's against TOS. Guys, ban bingo. <laughs> Bang! Bang! B no! Don't bang! <laughs> Ban! Bungo is what I meant. <laughs> don't bang! Please! I'm clipping that. That was funny. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> Every time I fuck up words, I clip it. It's so funny to me. Much more possible than Stanley Parables as humans. Ooh, okay. I'll give it a go, maybe. 
potentially. If it's on Game Pass, probably, but I have so many games to get through. Um, yeah, yeah, this is a broken mask from the guy we hit, for sure. So, have we found a mysterious warehouse creeper? Creeper? Aw, oh, man. Oh, and so we're back in the mines! Oh! It all worked out. We've at least found their hazmat suit. Ooh. If it walks like a nun creed and talks like a nun creed, let's not jump to conclusions. Ooh. Just saying. Bing, bang, boom. That's a lot of buttons. Super Liminal's also got this sort of ominous undertone to it. Yeah, but it always seems like kind of like upbeat to me. Like not like I want like games that are like gonna really make me creeped out or sad or scared. Like those like those ones that are real fucked up. That's the games I want for this month. I don't know why. It's because it's a leap year, and I was like, weep sounds like leap, so now it's a weep year, and that's that's the whole that's all of the effort I put into that really. Anyway. <laughs> Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi attack. Rolo's hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. I played a little bit of Little Nightmares. Uh, I gotta play through the rest of it. Maybe I'll do that on stream. I know there's an achievement to beat it in like two hours, and that stresses me out. Eeny, meeny, miny. Oh, shit. Suck me to the warehouse, baby. Rolo. Oh, fuck, what was it? Uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rello, what'd you do? Nothing. I didn't even mow yet. What was that? Hide. Where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. My accents are really, I'm trying so hard and I'm losing them. <gasps> oh shit. Shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Shit. Awesome. I need someone to hang out with me in VC while I do the fucking hospital. I have not beat it yet. I've played through like maybe the first two chapters. And actually Risco and I were playing together and I think Sai and then we all just stopped. I gotta I'm gonna go back and play at some point. Maybe I'll do it on stream. It could be fun. I don't know. I gotta think about it, because there's some achievements that I'm like I'm like I'm nervous, okay? It's a hard, it's a difficult game though, hundred percent. Anyway. You all need to come with me, now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. <laughs> Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password, but they love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until after the festival, I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Ooh, ooh. Hold on now, I like my skin. This is all stops now, Nuncreed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were friends back before. He gestured toward the strange tubes. All this. That's a lie. It's true. I used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on helping folks. So you were his sidekick? No. We were partners. He helped the patients and I helped him. Yup, total sidekick. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. His voice is so difficult to do. Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us, says he's got an opportunity. He's found someone, something he didn't quite understand, and he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was, it's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. Walt loved being righteous almost more than he loved his family. 
He was wrong about one thing, though. <laughs> My voice cracks. <laughs> They're crazy. Any friend of mine who will send VC with me while I do the hospital level? I'll try. We'll see. I got it. I'll see. I didn't say no. We'll see. I, I got to also, uh, I got to play two at some point. I want to. Um, I haven't bought it yet, though. I want to play Lethal Company. We're going to do that on stream soon. I don't know when. I actually texted some friends about it. One of them's in chat. You guys can decide who. Uh, I think. All right. Hopefully, we're going to do it Wednesdays for February. February. Sorry. Hopefully. I'm excited, dude. I fucking love Lethal Company. I've not been playing it enough. I might play it a little bit, actually, if I get some free time off stream. But when he begged me not to take Mr. Valent Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's, he day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. We already have four, Crow. <laughs> Chill out. We already have four. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there any point to the sub story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. Nuncree took a menacing step towards the children. We can play it off stream. On stream, uh, here's the thing. I'm very careful with who I have on stream. And also, like, the people I have on stream are generally people who were, like, my friends before being my fans, you know? So that's why like there's certain people I don't invite if they're in chat and I don't mean that as like a mean thing to you It's just I feel weird because then it's like where does the line stop of like fan to friend? So I just have to keep that dial somewhere strict so that it doesn't get weird because there have been times in the past where it's gotten weird I'm just trying to keep a line. So that's why I've got like my people who will I stream with but if you guys want to play off stream 100% let me know um, I'm down um, it's just stream. I gotta be I gotta be very careful with like who is on my stream, you know I don't want to get I don't want to get into it. It's fine. It is what it is. I'm just telling you that's that's the vibe anyway <laughs> I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this, but you forced my hand Luca began to laugh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's Luca's laugh. He's just fucking annoying what? You really don't know? My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Sounds like she's seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. Pot pot party. Pot eh. fuck off. <laughs> I can't do this. She's going to disrupt the festival? Why would she? The color drained from Nuncrete's face. I also need people to play with that are preferably not the 12 year olds that keep joining on Steam. <laughs> I'm excited to play. I can't wait. It's a it's a good game. I've played a very little bit off stream, but <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Lily. Appreciate it <laughs> um, But yeah, it's it's I haven't had like a bunch of time But so I haven't played too much. So a lot of it will be new to to me, uh, but I do know certain things um, Just from watching Ray Narvaez jr. Play it He is a good good uh, group of people. Anyway How does she know? Apparently, she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, big man. Nuncreed grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. She doesn't understand what it is she's messing with. I, uh... Tell me now! She's in danger, boy! I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in town square. The fountain? But why would... A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. She knows about the source? What the heck is the source? She's trying to destroy the source that could catalyze and... Dear God, she's gonna freeze us all. Away we go. <laughs> you all need to run. Run where? Away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. Okay. Are we going to finally see what's past that fucking thing? That did not go how I expected. So, we're totally following him, right? Tell totally. <laughs> see you on the other side. Uh, uh. 
You good? Yep. Oh, I love this town. The best friendships are, are trios, dude. Chapter three. Wait, what? Hard. Chapter eight. <laughs> what? Chapter three, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know how I got there. Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. The children are going to the mines, by the way. Just keep that in mind. The children yearn for the mines, man. A burst man. of wintry air snuffed across her face, and she was flung out into the cold. All right, here we go. That was intense. Yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids in there. Any idea where we are? Somewhere cold. Doesn't look like it got on any of us. It doesn't feel like we traveled that far. <laughs> where did it all go? This place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out here? Oh, I assumed he threw up, but yeah, he, he pissed himself, I guess. That also makes sense. Only one way to find out, I suppose. You gotta catch up to Nuncreed. I think he went this way. That's what he said it like that. Trust. I asked him. All right, any any secrets? Oh, this is secrets. This is secrets. Hello? Why did it let me get in here? Okay, that'll be like a later problem, I guess. Anything else? Ooh. I don't know why I keep expecting something secret. I think it's because I got that one charm that required me to sneeze on the dandelion. So I just want to look around and make sure. But there's only like four achievements left. And I'm pretty sure one of them at least is going to be a finale one. So the others should just be collectibles maybe. I don't know. This looks familiar. Yeah. Maybe you could clear off some snow. No time. Nuncreed's getting away. Oh, the freeze already happened. Oh, shit. If we go back this way, isn't this where our fucking house is? And if we go back up here, isn't this where our father's grave is? Yo, what's up, Dragon Slayer? How you doing? This was the grave. This was the house. The fence was right here where we hung out. And then this is the fucking billboard. Like, that we always pass. And if we go here, it's gonna be the town center. Fucking called it. The freeze already happened! Or something. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not- I may not be the most well-versed in all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen rec replica town. Oh, I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nuncreed is an alien! Rollo, stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective? Kill us all and shapeshift us into a Beacon Pine citizen of their choosing. The house is gone, so maybe we didn't just end up back in the same place. Like, maybe we're in a different place. But it is a replica, and I figured that out before they figured it out. So you should... You should... Uh, sub with Twitch Prime. <laughs> you really had me. You never really had me, but you have very much lost me there. You get used to it. We should keep moving. This was our, uh, this was where our camp was. So, obviously, and, like, there's no, like, bridge here and stuff. So, there are certain things that are different, but, um, and, like, this isn't as tall as before. So yeah, it's not all the same, but as they rounded the corner yeah. to the frozen town square, oh, they shit. spotted Mr. Nuncreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. 
Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nuncreed was after. Gran stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Don't do it, silly. You're gonna kill us all. I know because I've died to it like twice and to other things like multiple times as well. Okay. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. There's dynamite down there. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Like, why is, like, the... Uh, these kids... These people must be American. Why is the choice just to blow it up? I don't understand. Why don't you think first? <laughs> for a second. Just take a second. Take a beat. Hey, do we need to blow it up? No? I don't know. Maybe there's a different option before we just destroy? Um, anyway... Also, destroying the source? That's supervillain shit. How do you think that you're in the right by destroying something called the source? It is the life bringer. Anyway. I would get an ad break when serious shit is about to go down. Hey, you know what? Don't worry about it, because I spend half the time yapping anyway. So it's fine. Did I hear something, or was that me? Are people home? No one was supposed to be home until like 3 a.m. What the fuck? What is happening? Juniper, you don't know what you th I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, we're doomed. You've doomed this town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. There is thumping downstairs. <laughs> Someone's home. I'm gonna pause real quick. I'm gonna pause the recording. Give me a second, YouTube. Here we go. Let's keep going. We're good. We're not. I'm not being robbed. <laughs> I know what you've. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Ren, what's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Mr. Nuncreed turned back toward the kids, desperation in his eyes. Listen to your grandma, Luca. <laughs> this is between me and Juniper. Rolla went back held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. I need uh, Nuncreed to stop talking because it's hurting my throat. <laughs> Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Gran, his voice growing louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly understand you? <laughs> what? How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreed winced with anguish. <laughs> Shut up. I'm trying my best. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled. Not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Oh, shit. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. Guys, it's the weepier. It's perfect. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This will all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their pre precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, Ignoring don't- Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. 
She smiled and exhaled in relief. Oh boy. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to. Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. I didn't hear that part. Normally I would go for the, the sex joke, but I, I missed it. I missed it this time. I was so, I was so like, oh. Gran only had time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place, forever. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets, sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Damn. Yo, we failed well, again. that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Okay. We gotta keep going. Um... We're definitely getting closer to the end. We can either do tickle. Oh, this was when we were with the little freak, freak guys, um, the little guys who were fighting us. Or we could fight or flight. Oh wait, I want to actually do this one. This was a very interesting scene. If you guys don't remember, if you missed it, um, our uh, the bully, the bully guy, was turned into a monster. And he's hiding in our treehouse, and the company was after us. And so we fought, but it didn't work because the gun that we used is useless. It's just some shitty gun that Rolo made. Now we're going to try to flight and see what that leaves us with. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. The company, yeah, the company. Anything for the company. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taught. Anything for the company. Let's go. Wow, I can't believe it worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr, we'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, I G G Y. See ya, jerks. <sighs> Fine. We know where that leads, though. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Luca and Iggy <laughs> winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. Are we back in the snow in area? Fact, no way. It was ice. Oh my god, we we made it back somehow. Chapter 5. Signs. They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed I across the snowy terrain. We're back. How did we get back twice? Like, um, one after another? That's so crazy. Okay. That was actually pretty badass. Uh-huh. I think we lost him. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. Then what's up with the Winter Wonderland? All I know is there's no going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. It is a different area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which makes sense because look, there's no, there is no house. I thought maybe that big snow stack might be the house. Or something, but no, it's literally whatever that source is, is freezing everything. And when you blow it up, I guess that just shoots up, fucking shoots it everywhere. The source stuff everywhere, so it 
freezes everything. Um, but right now, it's just contained to this one area. Follow me. Find a way home. Okay. Now, obviously, we know that this tunnel leads home. Uh, I just want to see if there's anything this time over here. L Luca? Luca, are you there? Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. <laughs> I had, too, because that was from, like, two streams ago. <sighs> it's that bozo cur- Oh, it's that guy. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. <laughs> no need to be rude. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. It seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. Now, how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Hey, how did we find these radios, by the way? I'm, like, I'm forgetting now. Um. Oh, was it in the dumpster? In the warehouse? That would make sense. Yeah, that makes sense, actually, because then right after, in this timeline, Rolo got taken. He got snatched up. Um, and then he called us on the radio and was like, don't go to the treehouse. And then we went to the treehouse and now we're here. I figured it out. I pieced it together. It's, we've had so many branching timelines. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm watching Loki right now or Spider-Verse. <laughs> I'm, it's so much. Boy, howdy, you Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom sure was a handful. Luca That's why I disappeared her. Shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. <laughs> we gotta keep moving. Okay. Well. I'm trying my best, my friend. Alright. Uh, I mean, we... Oh. What's the readout? Sitting just above 258 Kelvin. That's down a bit from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Meh, it's still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. Just a few more sights to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. Okay. I was going to, um... I was going to skip this, but I since there was actually something to see over there, I have a feeling nothing's going to happen when I click this. So... Two faint seams were visible along the surface. A manhole cover? If it is, I've never seen one like it. Okay, well. Hop, hop. It doesn't do anything. Alright, let's keep moving. Oh my god, can we finally wipe off this board? Oh, maybe we'll actually get to see what this is now, because we're not in, like, a rush. What's all this? Hard to say with all this snow. I I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out letters from underneath. What, what could this even be? Why are they measuring Kev Kelvin? That's a- I mean, it's the science one. What do you mean? Kelvin is pretty scientific. I don't know why people use Kelvin. I know that there is a reason though. Like, hang on. When is Kelvin used? Widely in science, like I said. Particularly in the physical science. Often encountered as the color temperature of a lamp. Okay. So an old-fashioned incandescent bulb which puts out yellowish light has a co color temperature of about 3,000 K. So Celsius is like water. Kelvin, they wanted a temperature scale where zero reflects the complete absence of thermal energy. Okay. So yeah, Celsius is based on water, where zero is... Freezing, hundred is boiling. Fahrenheit, I don't know exactly what it's based on, but generally it's kind of based on, like, the scale of what humans feel. Yes, I am, Sophia. And then Kelvin is zero reflects the absolute absence of thermal energy. Very interesting. Anyway. Yeah, Fahrenheit's based on people. I just wasn't sure, like, exactly, um, if, like, what, how they discovered what to use, you know? But, um... Everyone, that's the one thing where I'm like, America's right to use Fahrenheit. If you're using Celsius to measure the degrees around you, you're fucking dumb as hell. I'm sorry, but you really are. Because, <laughs> this is an interesting lesson. Thank you. Thanks, Lily. I, if no one got me, I know Lily got me. It is so dumb to use Celsius to describe how you feel outside. Like, how you feel like the weather is outside, you know? Because, 
Like, the difference between, like, 26 and 27 Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius is insane. So, that's what... This is my- this is my TED talk. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> End of TED talk. Okay. There couldn't be another town this deep into weep wood. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Dude, Iggy looks so cool with this outfit, by the way. I really like the style for Iggy. I T G Y. Step one, Snow's gotta go. I'll see what I can do. Someone just broke a glass downstairs. What? Oh. Can I maybe... Can I just jump at it? How do I... How... Oh. Oh. Snowball. Of course. Lethal company. Oh. <laughs> I saw two words and I was like, I know what it is. Now clearly read. Welcome to Beacon Pines. So, what are your theories now that we have this new information? Potentially... Beacon Pines was the old Beacon Pines, then the foul harvest happened, so everyone moved over, and we didn't talk about how that this was the old one. But, like, why would the entire town hide that, right? I don't know. I don't know. I have to go and do homework. Ari, Spider-Man, no way homes on TV. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> uh, all right, have a good one, Sophia. That's fine. I don't I It's fine. You know, you don't, you don't love me. That's fine. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is that possible? Yeah, 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 we yeah, ran yeah, away yeah, from yeah, town. Yeah, How did we get back here? I guess we got turned around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where did all this snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. There's a... I'll take my leave. How going, Sophia? Enjoy your fucking Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> There's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought at before, it was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source? Yeah, 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 yeah. You think it's related? Yeah, 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 what the yeah. hell is going on? We're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. Yeah, the puddle that I dunked you in that turned you into this fucking freak? Let's go there. There's toxic waste over there. Yeah, they said the word source. Yo, guys, source. Yo, Valve. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all frozen. Looking down at the frozen stream, hey, no shit, Luca could man. faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Uh, yup, called it. They just broke a shot glass. I knew it, dude. I knew it. <laughs> I knew, I knew it. <laughs> My, we have family over, and they, they just happen to, like, I, I know, I knew that they were gonna party and go crazy the second that these people came over, and... Day one, immediate breakage of a shot glass. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim, run. Okay, so the fish are frozen. The crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but snow. There must be an explanation for all of this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. I Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We aren't gonna save the day. We aren't even gonna save ourselves. My face is mangled, the town is destroyed, and everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Iggy, it's gonna be okay. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. <sighs> Faintly, Iggy began to cry. I G G Y began to cry. Hey. <laughs> Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. <laughs> L let's just rest for a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. Aww. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. 
As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. It's a good story uh, writing thing when people take a bully and make them, you know, human, <laughs> you know? Like, obviously, Iggy's gonna be pretty messed up after everything. And Luca did try to save him, so they don't have a reason to fight. Like, he didn't know that was gonna happen. It's kind of sweet. It's kind of cute. I like it. I'm glad they're they're friends now. Kind of. I mean, he did call the Hank Atomic stuff pathetic, which is kind of an L. But, like, they both know that even if they're not this into the same stuff, they need each other right now. And that's sweet, and I like when that's in the story. Anyway. The way the snow covered everything over. It's kind of calming. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't had time to say it, but thanks. Huh? Yeah, 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 For getting yeah, yeah. us away from those creeps. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sort of froze up back there. I Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's bull hockey. Yeah, 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 First of all, yeah, you didn't yeah, even yeah, know yeah. what that gunk would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain, dude, I literally called it. How am I? I'm basically a writer. Basically, I wrote this game, actually. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second, stop with the baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose Iggy my temper. Motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse's ass. You were supposed to be a horse's ass in response. That's how it works. I Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course! Jeez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things trying to get into fights? He shrugged. It's something to do. You're an asshole because you're bored? Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Rolo are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission control. Dinky now wept openly. Perfect little Luca Van Horn with his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. I don't have parents. <laughs> what is. <laughs> yeah, Luca with his perfect little life. <laughs> with his <laughs> orphanage. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, man? His grandma who doesn't really love him or, like, spend any time around him. Who's, like, cut, like dead, I think? Apparently, right? <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? What are you talking about, man? I don't think he fully understands what's happening in this town. Everybody in town likes you. Not everybody. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet. Even she already likes you. You have Tish. He wiped his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. Tish is great, but she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? Luca gave a warm chuckle. I, I get that impression. Iggy cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. Huh. It must be raining out here. Definitely. Iggy arched into a wide <laughs> what did he say? Why did Luca say that? Definitely. <laughs> like, okay. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lo lay low for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of all of this. Lucas' eyelids begin to slowly drift shut. When they wake up, the people are going to be around them, right? I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. L Luca? Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah? I always yeah, yeah, did yeah, yeah, want to yeah, yeah. see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Hmm? That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to worst days of my life, this one wasn't half bad. Aww. The house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still <sighs> clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. What I wonder is, do these dreams build on each other? Because didn't we see the doppelganger in a different timeline? So I feel like the, the dreams, every time we see a new dream, it replaces, like, 
I think that's one of the things that carries over for us viewers, where we see it even though Luca technically didn't have that dream yet. Or at all. I think. Because I think that we saw the- I'm pretty sure we saw the doppelganger on the left um, timeline at some point, and we're on the right timeline right now. Oh, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow-gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. What the Luca fuck? Luca turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. Now, now, we both know that's not how this went. I like these stories where, first of all, they're in like a little town where anything could be true. Like, we don't know what the world's like. We don't know where we are. It's just a little town. And second of all, I like that it's like a younger character because there's so many chances for... Like, memory is such a weird thing when you're a young kid, right? Like, your brain is just not fully developed. It's, like, half developed at this point. It really makes it interesting, because you kind of see, like... When you learn things along the way, it's because your narrator is not completely trustworthy. It, it's amazing. I love he it. Grabbed Luca's hand I love this kind of story. the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt. We can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Luca flinched dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere? Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. A figure approached Holy soundlessly shit. from the foggy snowfall. Damn, bro! There's- okay, this is also one of my favorite things, is like this whole thing of like, I did this- like, th I was telling you this yesterday about, um, Gran being like, I'm doing this for my family, which is bullshit, cause, come on. I mean, I guess now we know that she- we kind of know more of her intention, so maybe she was right that she really thought she was doing this for her family. But, um, fucking, uh, the dad also being like, I gotta do what's right, but him not realizing that he's abandoning his family by doing what is right, that's also very interesting. 
Good story. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. <laughs> Damn. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. Get your hands off Whether me! It was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger. Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Just what do you think you're doing? Do what? Wait, hang on, hang on. I'm fucking walking here. Just what do you think you're doing? Luca looked up. I feel like the way that he, the way that he's written, it's definitely a very like Boston, New York kind of accent. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. <sighs> you two certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me, you... When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. You big-hatted, scarfy-necked furball. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. Great. How about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. What do you guys think Nat stands for? Natural? Could be natural. Like Mother Nature? Nat, Nat could be a representation for Mother Nature. I don't know. I just feel like they, they would put work into that name considering how this character was introduced. How about you make like a gnat and buzz off? Same thought. I didn't. I didn't see when you put it. Uh, if it was like after or before me. Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Wait. Do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are. You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or not? Before le before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. All right, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here, one way or another. Iggy turned sharply and began to stomp off. Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. I did you why? Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay, open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate and weep wood? Or we teleported to some alternate universe? Or this is all just some cruel experiment by Kerr and his goons? But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. I just give it to us straight. So be it. I'm really enjoying voice acting like different characters all at once. Like, it's difficult, but I'm having a lot of fun. This is, like, I tend to skip through narrative adventures sometimes, like, when I get bored of the, of the talking, <laughs> of all the yapping, but I'm having fun. This is some good shit. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. You both grew up here. 
But the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair. But a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. <laughs> he went a little British there, but also British. I mean, New York accent's kind of based on British because I think, because it's like the colonizer. Anyway, it's too much work. You'd need a, a whole town to replicate a whole town. Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense power, labor power. That which could be moved would be moved. That which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You'd think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialties which complete the tapestry, well, you can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. It has a real aversion to discontinuity. A revulsion, even. The brain has a powerful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. This is very uncomfortable. This is creepy. This is very... There's a metaphor here. I don't know if I can unpack it, but there's a metaphor here, and it's very interesting. So you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all, and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty? The best one we can do is to... The best one can do is to uncover. Nat narrowed his eyes, furrowed his brow, and uttered... The source. Why'd you say the source like that? Why indeed? Luca began to laugh uncomfortably. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. There's no way they could... He looked down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. If this really is home... He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weep Wood. Which way's west? It's, uh, it's to the right. Chapter yes? No. Six. No. North, south, east, west. West is left? I think. The source. Nat oh, expressed shit. his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. This is another thing where, um... Never eat- oh, never eat soggy wheat. Thank you. That's good. That's good. I like that. Um, this is one thing also where, um, this timeline could be the right one as well. Theoretically. We're learning so much information here. Like, I also like this about the game. I'm liking that, like, you don't know when you're gonna get to the end. It's about, like, just taking the journey there. Because I've been pretty, like, you know, just like, which way is gonna take me to the finale? But like, the whole point is to just get, collect all of the information you can so that you can get to the finale. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. Wait, oh, so the father died. Oh, because, wait, this is interesting. The father died before everything was moved over or after sorry after everything was moved over no before everything was moved over sorry what the fuck <laughs> I, I really flipped it in my brain too many times the father died then everything got moved over which means the tree also got moved over but i had assumed that assuming everything got moved over that the father died after everything was moved so then they just planted him there like sorry put his grave there not planted him there that's a fucked up way to say that <laughs> 
He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here, alone, in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? There was no reply. Just snow-covered silence. Why'd you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Ah. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. Shit, we're cornered. We gotta hide! 259k. Fall off distance, still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said 259. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. It doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of someone with a family. The people who love them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. He went down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Hey, don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. Why is he doing a little dance? <laughs> Weirdo. Here, I thought I was the jerk. These dinguses are out here literally dancing on graves. Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. I thought I was visiting him, but I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some advice. Iggy gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Hey! Who's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow crying like some pushover? Who's helping? Who are you helping? Iggy, look at what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Luca Van Horn, you a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you acting like a horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah. Karen, Karen is a merry little band of clipboards. Pulling, sorry, that's a lot of fucking weird words. Karen is a merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? Not mention something about a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure it would be a shame if something unfortunate would happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? Well, what do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. And what if it's too big to smash? He flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. I'm always up for a challenge. Damn, they really went grandma mode with it immediately. No fucking thoughts or anything. They just went full American. What people really need is a good slap to knock knock them to their senses. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, I get where he's coming from. But, like, also, yeah, they got to keep moving, bro. I'm going to make this right, Dad. I promise. Let's do this. Look at the source. Here we go, baby. I don't gotta locate shit, I know exactly where it is. Also, this game's very linear, you just go straight. It can get awful cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Helps on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's my mom? Where, did you kill her? Oh heavens no, do I seem like a killer to you? and Luca shared a skeptical look. I'm the Joker, baby! Well, do I? Ah, oh, shucks. Now you hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. I'm the Joker, baby. Wait a minute. If this is the original town, then that means... Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. Bro? What's that? 
Long story. So a few years back, I uh, came into possession of some premium grade fireworks. Not the wimpy firecracker shit they give kids. <laughs> the good stuff. So why'd you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop, and you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. No, you didn't. He stifled a chuckle. Yup. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But like, like I said, these were some primo fireworks. So I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as an incendiary re redecoration. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks in your faces. Rolo was grounded for months. Which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried him under that tree. But when I came back for him later, they were gone. I figured some grown up found him and tossed Piggy him. He triumphantly raised the shoebox. Turns out it wasn't the fireworks that got moved, it was us. Unbelievable. Damn. When did this happen? What's the timeline? When did they move? Do you think this is a game? News flash. Boyo, you're not a hero. You're a little brat who is in way over his head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotten children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. I like Kerr's voice has gone from kind of this pretending to be sweet but still creepy voice to just straight up supervillain. I didn't do it on purpose, but just like the lines I'm given have made me think that that was like the play. And it feels good. I don't know. It makes sense. He goes from pretending to be like normal but not really doing well at it because he's insane to, you know. Sorry, I just want to look around and see if there's anything here, but it doesn't look like it. We also have never been allowed to go into Town Hall, which is kind of weird. Crooked. Just like this whole stinking place. Good thing I looked! Good thing I looked. Went from might be evil to probably to I'm the Joker, baby. Yeah, baby, let's go. I'm the Joker! I'm glad I took a look at the town Luca hall. and Iggy good. inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. They inched up to the edge of the what? Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Echo! 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 Whoa! Well, I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. This is the source? It's a dang hole! How do we smash a hole? Boys, I've been asking that question for a long time. <laughs> What's up, Zen? How you doing? I've been doing well, bro. Oh, it's much more annoying than that. <laughs> Fuck, sorry. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr! You, where's Rolo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Trats, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source where they collect the unrefined, uh... Kerr scratched the back of his head. And honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Aren't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is merely to flash a winning smile and manage various complications. Complications like us? You are a smart boy. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. Been okay. I've been really busy. Really annoyed at yellow paint because it doesn't ever become opaque. Uh, don't know what that means, but... W's in the chat. I assume that you're dressing up to be Spongebob. That's what I think. Yellow paint. Yeah, we're getting so much lore, dude. I'm loving this. Also, I wonder if Crooked could be used somewhere. 
It really is nothing personal. Some people are destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is, we're all part. Fuck, we all play a part. Fuck, we all play our part in life. Opaque is not transparent. Okay. But no, I'm painting a Valentine's birthday gift. Okay, okay. Nice. Fucking Valentine's losers fucking making and celebrating Valentine's Day. Oh, I have. I. I people love me. Oh. Fuck off. Anyway. <laughs> when I stream Valentine. When I stream on Valentine's Day, I'm not doing anything for you fuckers. I'm just gonna play it a normal game. Actually, what day of the week is Valentine's Day? Oh, it's Wednesday. We're playing Lethal Company on Valentine's Day. Let's go. That's such a good day to have a fucking Valentine's Day, bro. <laughs> That's what she said, Zen. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's been... I don't know why it's been such a bit for me of, like... Just lately, it's just been so many... that It's been so many childish jokes. I love it. I... <laughs> I have a real dual personality of... One, I think I'm the funniest person in the world. And two, I think that no one else thinks I'm funny. But I'm funny to me. Like... I think, like, there's- sometimes I think I'm funny to everyone, and sometimes I think I'm only funny to me. But no matter what, in all of the situations, I'm funny to me, so it's okay. Anyway. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. And you happen to be extras, ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not gonna be so winning after we're done with you. Now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. Don't leave. Crow can leave. That's fine. <laughs> no, I don't like couples. I hate them. You know, fuck couples. But also, you're my mod, so you belong here. It's okay. It's okay. I guess I guess you can talk about being a couple or whatever. That's fine. I guess. No, I don't really care that much. I don't really like Valentine's Day because it's just a reminder uh, of me being alone. But it's not like I actually genuinely care that people are doing stuff. Oh my god, I had an idea for Valentine's Day TikTok. Remember my Valentine's Day TikTok from last time? I had an idea for this year, and I haven't done it yet, but I have time, so I should do that. Thank you for reminding me. Hang on. I'm, you know what? I'm going to open something just so I remember. So just so I remind myself. Because I had, like, a fun idea for sh uh, a TikTok. Um, I also might close off my old TikToks. I might, I might uh, pri private them. I want to restart on TikTok and do like new stuff. I've said the word TikTok like three times, five times, a hundred times in this last two minutes. Can we? <laughs> Your TikTok last year was epic. Was it? Should I keep it up? It like actually makes me uncomfortable because that's the whole point was to make people uncomfortable. That was the whole joke. But like it freaks me out when I see it. Just me making eye contact with the camera and stuff. Should I keep it up? Maybe I'll keep all my stuff up. I'm, I, I often um, shut down old videos, right? and like close them off and private them and i think i should stop doing that i think there should be some old stuff you know i never do it for the vods though all my vods are there i actually showed it to my brother the other day oh fuck people are still watching it oh no <laughs> oh well i'm glad you i'm glad you like it zen i appreciate you you're you're oh you're a good mod you're not one of the mods that bullies me and i appreciate that <laughs> all right we're gonna continue with the game here we go it makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Curse snapped his fingers. Scene change! Shit. There! That's better. Deal with them! Iggy turned to Luca with a sigh. Hi, Gigi. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop! Let's not do something regrettable. She jokes on you, regret is one of my specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? Nothing. Nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know, I'm an exceptional liar. I was absolutely a bullying mod back when Ellie had me as a Twitch mod, then he demoted me. Get fucked. I have no idea what's happening in this story, but like chilling with Ari is actually a vibe. The silliness is in the room. Thank you, Zed. I appreciate you. You got my ego going so high right now. Thank you. Thank you. 
bop, bop, bop. That's far enough. Iggy plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. I like Iggy now because Iggy is giving me like Jersey, Boston, New York vibes. And like that's a W, you know, because it's got Jersey in there. Fuck the other two, though. <laughs> I fucking hate New York. My parents are going to New York right now, actually. That's why they came back to drop off the car and take the take an Uber. But um, yeah, get fucked, New York. <laughs> Stop, you fool! <laughs> Call off your goons! After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Yeah, I get that. I like bullying people, but I also try to uh, have some nice moments too, so that it's not like always mean. Because I do like people. If I'm bullying you, it's because I like you most likely. Most, most likely, you know? There's those few that I'm like serious, but for the most part, I like you. Now you guys who are anxious can, you know, try to figure out which one you are. <laughs> Very well. You all can head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. It's just us now. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. What, like this? With a nonchalant flick. Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Oh, you dumb bitch. You just blew us up, didn't you? Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. I think I hit the population. No, 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 no. Just most of them. Oh, Iggy shit. Tried to twist away, but in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. Yeah, the art style's amazing. His Someone else came in and said that earlier, too. The cold, wet snow. Uh, I think it was Risco came in and said that, too. <laughs> Lily, I don't hate you, just so you know. You, um, you're a good- you're, you're, one, you're one of the good ones. <laughs> but, like, not in a racist way, just in, like, the population in general. You're one of the good human beings. <laughs> I feel like that phrase has <laughs> evil connotations otherwise. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's tasty. It's a tasty, it's a tasty video game. I'm liking it. You reckless child! What have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. Ow. Um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference, they're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just hog us, hog us up and... Blah. If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of here is if Kerr's out of the picture. Just let go and save yourself. If he lets us go, we both die. I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. I'm losing my mind, dude, for real. M Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do something selfish and just selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with insult. Is stream good? Okay. Good. I mean, not good. Sorry that Lily died, but like... W. I'm still going. It's not my fault. Long life? I'll have you know I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phileas Young. With a wild look in his My eyes, alarm's going off. Mr. It's already 11 o'clock. Dude, we got there fast as fuck, boy. Uh, I did my Duolingo before stream today. Actually, I did it uh, in the middle of stream, technically, when the starting stream thing was there. But anyway. Fixed. Welcome back, Lily. Dum dum dum. I don't really know what this song is. Property dum dum. <laughs> Wow, can you believe this guy? Hum, nice. Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Care, just let go. No can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loosen his grasp. You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just a no good bully. Like you, Kerr. Iggy, no. Luca felt his hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. 
I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoo's traveling packs. A calm settled over Iggy's face. Luca, let me do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do the right thing for once. Which, I mean, which one do you guys want to do? I know where I'm leading. I love Iggy, I love the Boston, but... My hair is herring? <laughs> hey man! <laughs> this is a very different conversation! <laughs> but also, my hair... Not herring. I just washed it, so it's a little bit flat, to be honest. It's not the worst, though. Poll? You want poll? Let's do a poll. Yo, Zen, can you do a poll? Refuse or accept, please? Holy shit. I'm leaning accept. Um. Sorry, I got so many texts. Why is everyone talking suddenly? Alright, um. <laughs> accept, fuck it. Ah, oh, fuck the poll. <laughs> we got Lily saying accept. I'm gonna accept. <laughs> we'll go back and do refuse God, after. No it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's alright. It's okay, man. It just feels break, right to accept. Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. Uh, for future reference, you just do slash poll. But don't worry about it. You're good right now. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Here's the thing. I love viewer interaction. You guys don't have to interact all the time. <laughs> you don't always have to have an input. I wanted to accept, so I accepted. And Lily had a little bit of an input. <laughs> Good. Buy my favorite jersey. By darkness. Jersey boy. Also, like, we lost Kerr. And, like, Kerr's a freak. But also, his voice was so fun to act, bro. <laughs> That's sad. It's sad for me because I lost my two favorite voice act acting things. Yeah, let's go! <laughs> That's fucked. That's so fucked. Damn, they took a while to hit the bottom, though. Hell of a goodbye, Iggy. I GG. Why? One last one, just to remember. Remember him by. <laughs> Two people died. Yeah, fireworks. Let's go. I didn't know agreeing to them dying. Yeah, no, you just caused their deaths. You murdered two people, bud. Luca, you should really step back. What? Quickly. Oh, shit. Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before her perennial harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempus liquamine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, the energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk make things cold and the fireworks made the freeze, the whole freeze over. That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in that case. We have some idea what that would look like. We do. It would take a good while to safely break through and access the source again. If you know all this stuff, why haven't you been helping? I have been, in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Higgy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why me? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. 
Luca Van Horn, you are going to save the world. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. You guys know that song? To be continued in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. <laughs> Revenge served cold. Second time's a charm? Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just okay. when it was getting good? Okay, so we technically got it, but it's like we're like we're not looking for Luca to survive and and stuff. We're looking to create the perfect ending to this book. That's that was the original thing that happened in in like when we started. Beatrix was asking us for help to create this book. So technically we got it, but she doesn't think it's a good enough ending. And she's right. I was even starting to like Iggy. Same. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive. Unless you're Rick Riordan, yeah. Then then sequels, go for it, baby. Do, make more. Keep going. I say we refuse. It's time to refuse. See what that leads us to. I really think that'll just lead us to death. But we might... I have a feeling it'll push us a little further because he will kidnap us probably and take us to see... I assume Rolo and maybe our mom? Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Your mom! Now, radio exactly. for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time. But Luca pressed the button and called out. We... we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. I fucking Get hate away. you. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. I'm glad we didn't do that the first time. The other one was... God, I hate... Ugh. I didn't want to hurt, help Kurt ever. I want him dead. Like, I love voice acting him, but man, his... The way he acts right now, like, I'm imagining it, and I want to murder him. The end. Oh, shit. We don't mm, even get to see Rolo or anything. I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. Just like our dad, though. Just like our dad did. See, we had to break the cycle. By letting uh, Iggy die, we essentially broke the cycle of what our dad was doing before. Okay. Well, it's good that we finished that. Uh, I think... Unless Crooked gave us something. Oh, shit! We got a new thing here. We can do hum. Here, you know what? I do want to see Tickle, though. But I feel like that'll lead to, like, a whole new thing, maybe. I'm unsure. Let's keep going with hum. Because I'm just so... I'm so, we're, we're doing so much new stuff. I'm just so intrigued. Just want to keep going. The stillness. He began to hum. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. See you in a bit, Zim. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. You can hear it. A 
Gran lowered the torch, listening closely. As recognition slowly set in, her heart sank. Those countless nights of consolation, the incomparable loss they shared together. She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. Damn, this really is weepier, bro. <laughs> it's upsetting. This would be the finale timeline. Just saying. Just throwing that out there. I had to hit A that entire time. <laughs> I was like, yo, this is going for a really long time. <laughs> I was scared to hit A. I didn't want to ruin it. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my God. We've been sitting there for so fucking long. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. I clipped that shit. That's so funny. Holy fuck. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> my bad guys i'm sorry if you were waiting to like see what happened you were like why is this going so long yeah same i'm i'm i was also confused that's so funny okay the last time he heard that melody was the last night he saw his mother how do you know i'm so sorry my little buckaroo buckaroo the only people who call me that are my dad and your mother. Luca blinked through blurry water. No way! Eyes, trying to see more clearly. No way! Oh my god! We learned that fucking the uh, uh, the source has to do with time or something. That's our mother. She's been with us the whole fucking time. No way. The grandma is fucking dead because this isn't this isn't the grandma, it's our mom. He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older, changed. Mom? That's right, Buckaroo. Mom! Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. Uh, Eleanor? I thought you were... gone? You should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. Oh my god, I'm so upset right now. I'm so upset. I don't even know how to process these emotions. This is such a traumatic story. Like this poor 12 year old man. That's yeah, that's where his mom went. She was with him the entire time. Everyone just thought that it was her mom or the dad's mom. I don't know, but 
Fuck, dude. How? You're a very s you're a smart man, Joseph. I thought you'd have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I don't understand any of this. You're dipping now? <laughs> Out of after all of that, for instance, just like peace out. Thanks. <laughs> have a good one, Zen. Thanks for helping in. What happened to you? Where did you go? Why'd you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why'd you lie to me? It tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. These are bad people, Luca. They won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. And what do we do? We have to stop them. Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I tried beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see now there's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold, hard truth. Luca gazed down at Nuncreed with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Come on, everybody. We've got a party to crash. This is so tragic or bad upset. Like, this is. No, no, I've loved this game this entire time. I'm good, good upset. That was a really good reveal. I, w I didn't even guess that. You don't understand. He always wins. Chapter 9 The Devil You Know. Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. This is genuinely making me want to read a book right now. Like, I'm not even kidding. I l actually really like how this is, like, formatted. The stolen key card worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I'm tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar. Excuse me? I will not. This town is a dangerous secret, and perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense! They picked up the whole damn town and moved it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense, dear! Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated... Mrs. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to... You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is growing tiresome. A little help, please? Don't you all see? This festival is a sham, an excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. 
I am Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as the dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry about this dinner disruption. I thought I was going to say interruption, so I, I went for interruption. My associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable so that she can get the help she needs. We need help Rolo, by the way. She's not the one who's disturbed. You two-timing clown! Well, you all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... Oh, shit. Isn't this a fucking child, by the way? Solomon? That's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncreed's face. Yes, sir. Take them away! No. I want them to see this. Ah, uh, the ever temp tempestuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You've managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expected something a bit more impressive than inco incoherent rambling. No matter. Your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr! Yes, sir. It's a shame it was shut court. Fuck. It was, a, it was a shame it was cut short. But I thank you for that rousing oratory. I'll take it from here. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. You have done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the recompense we agreed upon. Kerr gave a bow of deference. Shut up, girl. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> quit throw. <laughs> Founder, you are most gracious. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Remember when we failed in the last one and he said he would take us to the founder? We thought it would be the heiress. Because the heiress was taking care of Solomon. I thought Solomon was a kid. He might still be. But... Reverse time? Rever Reverse time? Is this the father? Oh! This is the father of fucking uh, uh, of the mayor. Yo, Crow, you might be right, actually. Cause Solomon's a kid, and I thought that I thought that he was like adopted by the heiress. Well, they're not necessarily like if they can fast forward, it doesn't necessarily mean they can reverse it, but it is an interesting thought. Thankfully, we can dismiss with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. Shots, 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 shots. Well, like, a I, yeah, plot wise. Grew across Solomon's lips. Like, it's not necessarily how the signs would work, like, how they write it. But, like, yeah, yeah, the writers 100% could decide to reverse time, too. You can all call me. Sharper, Valentine. Crow, you called it! Good job! His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. A hushed horror gripped the crowd. This is a story about change. Holy shit. <gasps> What? No! <laughs> so you didn't see this coming? Good. Sharper examined his new hands. <laughs> well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. 
I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we set the mood. Mr. Kerr, be a deer and reveal the sign. <laughs> Wonderful. Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Sharper, you malicious beast! Bastard! Malice. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face! You destroyed this town! We ain't gonna let you get away with it again! Sorry! This is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. William Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You're clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children. Daddy. I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence. Squandered. To say I'm disappointed would be an understatement. Damn, he's really Ro Logan Roy right now. Three stream streak. What's up, Ellie? How you doing, baby? How you doing? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. But I... Silence, Augustus! An adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse. A son who is completely hopeless. Or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Eris, you film, fail me with admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Father, I... I've been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... <laughs> Ellie eats markers. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Anya? How you doing? Do you want me to call you Peachy in here? I don't know what you, I don't know what you prefer. Welcome, though. It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where's Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Okay, cool. <laughs> You're covering him in there. Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense. The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. You can also call me my my government name. I, I don't think I will. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. His government name is Ellie Beatmaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For a second, I was like, Ellie? You want to be doxxed? What are you talking about? No matter. Cheer up. You're about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. I didn't say call me my government name. I said call me government name. I didn't read that properly. You right. <laughs> you right. My headphones are pissing me off. An aging actor desperate to recapture his youth? He played his part and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frittered away my goodwill. Pecan Pines is mine again. And I'm willing to share spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. You think that puffed up blathers kite could have accomplished all of this? Damn, I suppose it's time for your big ex Oh, so fuck. Dawn, I think it's a- <laughs> Dawn, I think it- I su- <laughs> Fuck, ah! I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. Holy shit, I'm gonna pass out. You're still doing the pig noises for the bat? 
It's not pig noises. Pigs go oink oink. Bats go. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect a lie and bilk this town for a spell. So I invented William Kerr. Take your bow, you've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Patrick C. Montesquieu, thespian extraordinaire, at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly was the role of a lifetime. Wait, so this Bill Kerr was a patsy the whole time? Funny. I like that. Uh, what's a southern bell like trigger word that I can use? Ooh, I'll use reroll. Everyone hates using reroll. They're so scared. Southern, wait, classic southern bell phrase. Um, too big for his britches. <laughs> you catch more, you catch more, what? Okay, well, no, I don't know. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Now that your secret's out in the open, what's to stop this town from rousing up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears most. Make it cheaper and maybe also a different color so it stands out more? Maybe, yeah. I was thinking of making it cheaper, yeah. And I'll make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> the young hero. I've kept a keen, keen eye on oh, I've kept a keen eye on you, my boy. You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity. If things would have gone differently, you might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I've won. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. And now, time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought, but well worth it. <laughs> Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat. Let's get to work, shall we? And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. There's nothing I can do? The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Are you kidding? Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous. Crow, you gotta get my pronouns right, bud. A secretive town that, for the right price, you got it. shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. It became... Wait, sorry, I... Interesting. Oh, I was like, why do the winters grow longer? It's because they never actually, we never cleaned up that hole. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Okay, what can we do? What do we get? What new thing we get? Anything? Or do we have to start this path? All right, here we go. Tickle, tickle. Um, for those of you who don't remember where we were right now, um, I think Rolo got taken. We started looking for him in the woods with uh, our new friend Beck. Uh, we meet the bullies, and we were dealing. We were discussing how to deal with them. So the last time, Beck went strange, um, and then because she was being strange, uh, Iggy started. Uh, being mean to her and so we stood up to him pushed him into the puddle that started that whole path now we're gonna tickle well time to bust out the tickles hey tish oh fuck uh whoa, whoa, whoa. hey oi tish want to see something cool yup check it beck lunged forward and began to tickle under tish's arms <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
What the? Ch Tish, is she tickling you? Yup. Oh, yup. Yup. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Hup, hup, hup. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Yup. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I, sh I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm -hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the I puddle before making Thank you. his escape. <laughs> no! Beck got puddled! Oh, what a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Um, is it bad? Yeah, it depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh, God. Shit! No! Chapter 4. The Best Policy Oh, dude, come on. It was supposed to be IGGY, bro. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. The streak is cool, though. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. The, the the purple streak in her hair was cool, but, like, I just monstified her. Monsterified. Alright, we gotta keep looking for Rolla. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Alright, we saw that last time. Oh, I can't f fuck off. I think I gotta keep looking for him, but there's nowhere to look here, so. And I assume there's nothing here. Nope. All right, let's keep. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Roxy oh, it was gray, not purple. Looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's uh, Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolo and I weren't just playing in weak wood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was in there and was there in a strange suit. And we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran. But we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground and thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. <sighs> It's not your fault, Luca. Rolla's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm going to fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around, I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolla shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. Actually, I like Roxy. She's sweet. You really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been- Fuck, what was that accent? My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. All right, let's go to the treehouse. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Oh, shit. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. 
Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him, I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncreed gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Dang it, boy. If there's something you know, something that you could tell a friend, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It what do you mean by subtle, substantial? But Luca could sense something eating away at him. Did I mess up a word? There, I mean, we know there's a shame. So let's go with malice because I feel like that'll kill it faster, maybe? I don't know. I want to kill the, the dead end runs and get to the end run, but I don't know. Let's go with malice because we know it's shame. There was malice lurking behind those eyes. Like a trap ready to spring. Oh, substantial Luca hands. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. You know what they say about a guy with big hands. Something wasn't right. I don't, actually. He didn't know why, but Micro something penis? was telling Luca to get out of there. Uh, I just want this to all be over. Of course, I'm sure it will all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy to check for all at the warehouse. Tri Treehouse. Shit. Grasp. Of course. Luca. You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Okay. Shame is going to be an interesting one to see. Oh, fucking... Identify yourself, please. Nellie Bodwell. I work here now. I'm unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Tomorrow, Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Oh shit, she's in with them, bro. She's in with them. She's not a good one. She's a bad person. Rolo? He aired a long holler into the woods. Rolo! <sighs> Rolo, wherever you are, I hope you're doing Luca okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. Isn't Rolo the motherfucker that wanted to kill you? What, wanted you that I wanted you to kill? Oh, maybe. Um, I feel like I remember that from yesterday. So yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, it's because he he's, he made fun of my dad being dead. Yeah, that was fucked up. This time. He knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Lucas stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. I don't think that's how it works. Sake, the voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out, 
As Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward, that's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Aww. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. That might be the last dream. It feels like Luca the last one. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. I went, okay. Is this commanding? I thought maybe it's Rolo, but I don't know what to do when we don't know the voice. <laughs> I just don't know just where to go. as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Chapter 5 Dangers Big and Small Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. It's the malicious guy. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Oh! Stop right there! We're all... Sheesh, I know it. Wait, it is Rolo, isn't it? Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Stop now or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Luca, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle? Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it's really you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him Excuse was me. undeniably Rolo. Only bigger, older, changed. Oh, what happened to you? When I was running away, I felt I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. R Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. Excuse me, Crow? Someone wanna- someone wanna shell snipe Crow? I- I would not be against it. What the- His hands shot up to his face. <laughs> we all thought it? I didn't! Holy Toledo! Rolo, what'd they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tastes like licorice. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? <laughs> Ari come joke the ace didn't. Don't call me that. No, because he's like 12 in the, in the like mentally. <laughs> it's like that one movie that's like the kid who accidentally became an adult or whatever for a bit and like fell in love with a woman and then got back to being a child. Um, so whenever I watched that movie, I don't even remember what it was, it was for class. Uh, whenever I watched that movie, I was like, yo, this movie's weird as fuck, bro. And it's the same thing here. <laughs> Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. 
Remember how we found Solomon in front of Nuncreed's talking about licorice? I do. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger. <laughs> Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Oh, hey, fellas, what's up? With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. Ah, take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened. I need help. I don't. I didn't know where else to go. Hydrate. Thank you, Vel. Appreciate it. Ooh, a stretch too. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude, I like the dyed hair. She looks cool. She got the beanie. She got the dyed hair. It really fits her character. Oh, I needed that stretch. That was good. Thank you so much, Vel. Appreciate you. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Ah, uh, no. This is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend? One in the same. He seems a little old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. Yo, Bishop! How you doing, bro? Welcome. That's fair. How did you find us? You silly little trios? Oh, I think you mean our silly little mission control. I had to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. Not for now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rolo. This has been a weird... A weird day all around, hasn't it? Yup. Beck's eyes narrowed. Yep. Sorry, I did it a little bit too deep. <laughs> okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My... Made it back home. Ha! My... F <laughs> my first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay. Just need a plate? Cool. And hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... <sighs> Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey. What in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. Ilona tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her, her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a great A creep. Beck! He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ru ruin this job for Nellie. It's one of them blue-haired! Oh no. <laughs> it means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means e enough to, to her to exile her daughter to a podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single, single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another she peep. She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. Like, no shit she got grounded. Are you kidding? What? That's such a... Such a bit. <laughs> I know moving is hard, honey. But that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair she more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, mom. I feel like... The hair wasn't that big of an issue, though. Like, come on. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No, no. 
I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great, can we go back to the story now? The next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom and I was too angry to go to sleep. So I tried to dial in to something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr? Are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to meet from you, to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Modwell seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the left, work left by her predecessor. Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any rest risks. Oh, of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. When she fil finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest... Maybe we should delay, just for a bit. No? It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline. And rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run sl smoothly, not to have opinions. Oh, of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Did I get any achievements today? Nope. I was hoping I'd uh, get a new streak going, but I didn't get any achievements today, so L. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Oh, sorry. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they say loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder? Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping- I, I was hoping you guys could- would know. Fuck, all the accents are tripping me up. I was hoping you guys would know. No, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell's my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work because someone she respected. The more people you murder, the less accents you got to do. That's what I'm saying. We killed off two people in, in earlier and that was even easier. <laughs> Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was the person, bo the person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got um loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't she just come home from work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So she, if she's not coming out, we got to go in and get her. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. So, uh, okay, so the left side is definitely not the correct side. Because when we confront the founder at the festival, she would already be dead. And I don't think we saw... Did we? We might have... Actually, we might... I don't remember. But we... I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure we didn't see her mom at the festival. So, that left side might be completely wrong now. Oh, also, since Bishop mentioned that he wasn't here anyway, uh, this is what we're looking at. It's You can make a bunch of different choices to get different uh, things. Right now, we're looking at Malice in this one. Um, but yeah, we've cleaned up literally everything else. This entire left side is completely clean unless we get a new charm that will work with it. But um, when we went to Hum, there was... Yeah, we saw the festival. <laughs> Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map for my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? Lolo started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. 
Chapter 6. This is perfect timing because it just hit midnight. So I think we do chapter 6 tomorrow. Yay! Cliffhanger, baby! Let's go! You guys excited for tomorrow? Be here tomorrow. Same time as always. 9 p.m. EST. We'll be here. We'll be doing this. I'm excited. Uh, I'm upset about the cliffhanger too because I don't get to play anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah. Yo, we made some... We got... And the reason I'm pausing now is because we got so much fucking lore. Like, I just have to pause. What's the crap moving behind you? Chill out. What do you mean? I'm looking. I don't see anything. What do you mean? What's moving behind me? Oh, the balloon. Yeah, it's dead. It died around the 25th. It lasted ex like almost exactly a month. Um, I actually got to pop it and get rid of it now. I'll do that tonight. Actually, get rid of it. I was going to mention it on stream. But yeah, it's dead. It's on the ground, that's what I mean by dead. Balloons can move, that's fine, but it's like the wind is moving it. The wind is moving a corpse, but it's not staying up because it's dead. Um, balloon is not alive. That's like if you start moving a dead body and like you're like, look, he's still alive. It's like the weekend of Bernie's. Like, look, Bernie's still alive. He's not, he's dead. Uh, YouTube, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Have a good one. Appreciate you. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. For probably the finale. I think it'll be the finale. And if we finish early, maybe I'll do Celeste 64. I d I, it's not technically a sad story, but um, Celeste is pretty sad. So I think it's fair that it, I'm only going to do it if we have free time. I'm not going to do it as its own separate stream, but I'll do it if we have free time. So, yeah, have a good one. Take care, YouTube. Bye bye.